Today's video, I'll be talking about chargers for your electric vehicles. But as to not drag this video out for 20 or 30 minutes, I'm gonna split it into three parts. This will be one of three, where I'll talk about specifically chargers for your home, and with that, type one chargers. Now this will cover, of course, Teslas like the Cybertruck here, but I'll also go over non-Teslas like the Rivian. This would be if you were in the camp of like a Lucid or a new Kia, Hyundai, or one of those will fit in that category also. Which means you're gonna have a charger with a plug that looks like this and an outlet on a wall that looks like this. Or you could have a plug that looks like this with that little sideway plug, in which case you have an outlet that looks like this. Today I'll be focusing on what specifically should you be buying for your car at home if you only have 120 volt access, which I'll expound on that later. This will cover whether you have a Tesla like this, or whether you have a Rivian like this, or you have both, what should you buy? I'll be discussing what brand should you be gravitating to, and more importantly, what brand should you be avoiding? And then we'll go more into depth about the brands that I'm gonna to suggest to you, why they're better than some of the cheaper alternatives out there. I do think I'm uniquely qualified to speak on this subject, being as how I've been an electrician now for over 20 years, and I've bought my first electric vehicle over five years ago now, in which I currently own, as part of my obsession, four different electric vehicles, including the two that you see with me here today. Level one charging. There's really two different types of charging within that level one, or two different amounts of charging might be a better way to say it. So you have what's a 15 amp charger, and then you also have a 20 amp charger. Let me explain the difference. What you see here on your left is a 20 amp charger, and it's signified by the little sideway plug. Here on your right is a just typical 15 amp plug, which you can tell, which looks like a more standard outlet you might see. So let's talk difference between 20 amp and 15 amp, because this is huge. This is gonna be the difference between you charging significantly faster, but also it could be the difference between you starting a potential house fire in your garage or home. Without getting too technical, I'll keep it very basic. An amp is basically the amount of current that's traveling through your conductors or your wire into whatever load you're charging, which in this case would be your car. So if you could pull 20 amps of power, that would be more than pulling only 10 to 15 amps of power, which means you would charge your car faster. However, your particular wire and your outlets in your home are only rated for a certain amount of amperage. You would not want to pull 20 amps of power if your outlets, your wires, and your breaker are only rated to pull up to 15 amps of current. If you were to over pull that amount of amperage, your breaker would trip. If you have mistakenly upstaged your breaker or if you have a faulty breaker, you could pull more amperage than what your wire could handle and that's where house fires start. Most outlets you buy will have somewhere stamped on them here, especially like in the United States. This one you can see right here says right on it, 15 amp, 124 volts. So if I were to put more than 15 amp into this outlet, I would have a problem and the outlet and the connectors within this outlet would not be able to handle more than 15 amps. Even if I was on a 20 amp circuit with a 20 amp breaker, 20 amp gauge wire, this particular outlet would not be able to handle it and this would be the weak spot and this is where the fire would start. Any of this is confusing to you and you have to change anything related to your electrical vehicle in your home, whether that's a wire, a breaker, or an exact outlet, please get a licensed and professional electrician involved because the risk of fire and over amperage is huge when we're dealing with this amount of amperage being pulled through a system. Now, ideally you live in a home where you have access to a plug that looks like this, 240 volts, or you can have one of these installed in your garage. That's gonna be a game changer for you. But if not, you have the 120, that's what kind of focus on for this moment. I'll go more into depth with this type two in the second part of my video. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to see more in depth about this in coming videos and all the cool stuff this bad boy can do that the other one just isn't capable of yet. What should you buy if you only have access to a 120 volt outlet, which is gonna be the simple plug like we've just discussed. You should be looking to get something that's a brand that you know or recognize. Now, if you had one of these come with your vehicle, whether that's a Tesla, Rivian, Lucid, you name it, I would suggest using that one first. But what if you wanna buy a spare, or you've lost or damaged yours, or you've just bought a car that's used that doesn't have it? I would look to buy one for a name that you know and recognize. The one that I recommend, I've been using now for more than five years, is one made by EV Dance. I now hold over five different EV Dance products and they've really stood up the test of time. They've quietly become the go-to name in aftermarket chargers. They're not always gonna be the cheapest, although they're very competitive. 
let me tell you about why you wouldn't want to necessarily go to always the cheapest one you could find on Amazon or eBay. You're gonna make sure you're buying what you're actually thinking you're buying. If you are trying to buy the maximum speed, that 20 amp charger, and you accidentally only buy one that's a eight, nine, 10, 12 amp charger, solely based on price. And sometimes is they have a cheaper, smaller gauge wire, which that's how they are a cheaper charger. They're literally have a smaller conductors and they're gonna charge your car much slower. So the 20 or 30 bucks you think you're saving, you're not really saving because it's gonna take you that much longer to charge your vehicle. And you're gonna have to stop and charge at superchargers where it's more expensive, more than you have to charge at your home. One thing I'd recommend looking for in a charger is, I prefer to have one that can handle the 20 amps but can adapt down to the 15 amp. And that's exactly what I have here. The end of this plug that I have from EV Dance has that slight, that horizontal plug, but it also has this, which allows me to adapt. This side accepts both. This could plug into the charger, and then I could plug into any standard 120 volt outlet I might have in my garage, and their box is gonna do the conversions for me to make sure I'm not over amping and that I'm safe and secure and not putting my family and my garage, my vehicle in danger. The next factor that you wanna check when looking for a charger is how long it is. I would highly recommend getting a charger that's at least 25 feet. Now, you can make an exception to this if you know exactly where you're parking every day, you know that you can pull in or back in based on what your vehicle you have, and it's gonna be right there. Maybe there's that exception. 25 feet does not go as far as what you think it's gonna go, so a 10 or 12 foot charger is definitely not gonna go to where you think it's gonna go. And a charger that's pulled or yanked or can't plug squarely into your vehicle or the wall is gonna have a potential arc risk, which is a huge fire hazard in addition to any of these other factors we've already mentioned. Next is kilowatts. A watt is very similar to on the amperage, but everything in electrical, especially here in America, like on your power bill is done in watts or in kilowatts. Make sure what you're buying can handle up to 3.5 of kilowatts or greater. If that number is below 3.5 or even below three in the 2.5, 2.8 range, that's gonna be too slow. Make sure whatever charger you're looking for to buy has a stated operating temperature on it. If it doesn't state what ranges of temperature it can operate in, chances are it may overheat in the extreme heat of the summer or it could be too cold to be correctly used in the winter time. A good charger will be able to use well below zero. The good ones, negative 15, negative 20, which is one of the reasons I prefer the EV dance models. It can also work up to 120 degrees. Make sure you have something that operates in extreme cold and in extreme heat. And lastly, I'd recommend something that has some kind of status light or status bar that's gonna show different colors based on what's it doing. One color when it's charged, another when it's charging, another color in the event there's a fault or something's not charging right. I like this because it tells you visually in a dark garage, it just lights up and shows you what's happening so you know what's what, and especially warns you quickly if you have some kind of a problem. Before I get into what do you do if you have a Tesla and a non-Tesla, let me say this first. Just know if you are charging at only 15 amps, the average vehicle you'll only be adding somewhere around two or three miles of range to your car per hour, which means if you're parking overnight for 12 hours, you could only be adding somewhere around 24 to 36 miles of range. If you live very close to your work, that's great, no problem. Whereas if you can get that 15 amp, it's still not great, but a little better. At that point, you might be getting somewhere around three to maybe four, potentially five on the high end, which is great then. Then you can add somewhere maybe closer to 30 to 50 miles of range overnight while you sleep. If you have a home in a garage where it's at all possible for you to add a 240 volt plug, that's what you should be doing. But I know some of you are in shared parking or your garage or your apartment or your town home is just maxed out of power. You can only get that 15 or 20 amp. In that case, yes. But if you're in a home and you can do it, get yourself a 240 volt plug. This is gonna allow you to charge up to 36 amps. And again, I'm gonna get a whole lot more in depth of this in the next video in part two, but that's gonna charge your car in a matter of anywhere between 12 hours to as short as like four and a half to five hours. So what if you have multiple brands of electric vehicles? Your Tesla is gonna, of course, take a plug that looks like this, whereas pretty much every other car out there in the market is gonna take one that looks like this. Now, if you only have one or the other, buy the one that particularly fits your kind of car, that's easy. If I have a Tesla only, I'd only buy this. If I had Rivian or Lucid only, I'd only buy this. But what if you have both like I do? What should you get? That's where I'd go with the Rivian or Kia or Lucid style charger. This right here, comes with every Tesla out there and they can be bought very cheaply. And this is one of the rare exceptions of the thing I'm talking about in this video today where 
I think there's a lot of these that are made really well out there that you can get very inexpensive. This will easily help you, help you adapt from your NACS charger to your Tesla type charger. This would be the way I would go if you had both vehicles or you thought potentially in your future, you would get both of these brands of vehicles. Now, EV Dance is not a sponsor of this video, but they have agreed to partner with me that if you'll buy anything off their site and use my channel name, which is gonna be EVD for EV Dance Charisma, you can get up to 20% or more off of any product you buy in your cart when you use that promo code. Nothing in it for me, just get you a discount. Again, they have quietly become the go-to aftermarket charger out there on the market. They're still affordable, but yet really top-notch quality. And speaking of quality, one last thing. This is something that you can't read, you can't see, you can't notice on the specs, is sometimes your really cheap brands, the brands you've never heard of, have limited reviews, but yet are the cheapest by a long shot. Sometimes they'll use a cheaper quality of actual connections. As you can see here, you don't want this to happen to you. What makes this happen is when your outlet gets too hot. Oftentimes that happens, not because you're just pulling too much amperage, but because you have a bad connection. If you ever hear some kind of like sizzling, like a or a clicking that sounds like that, a lot of times what's happening is your connection is not strong. It's connecting and not. Connecting and not, sometimes 50, 60, 70, 1,000 times in a second, it's making that connection and disconnecting. What this does is it creates a arc. Very similar to the term you'd hear, arc welding is found. Arc welding is simple down to say, it's when you connect power to something and then take it away and then add it back, which creates such intense heat, it melts two different forms of metal to each other. Now that's again, a oversimplification of what it is, but in a nutshell, that's what's happening to your outlets if you have cheap connections. Your connection is barely making, or sometimes strongly making, but then opens and breaks and opens and breaks. Don't just go with the cheap one out there. Go with a trusted name out there on the market, like a Tesla, a Rivian, or an aftermarket like EV Dance. So this video was a help to you, and if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel, because part two of this series I'll go more into depth to type two or level two charging. And I can't wait to show you this new product I got from EV Dance that's really gonna totally change the game. It's gonna be safe, but also save you money. So you're not gonna wanna miss that. Check with me on this next video. And then part three is we get to eventually, I'll go into supercharging and all the different adapters you can use to make your car charge at a Tesla, non-Tesla, or vice versa. What's safe, and more importantly, what's not safe to do and what superchargers I'd recommend that you totally avoid. See you in the next one.